Welcome to part two of the data analysis video. This video is designed to show you how to turn your curve line graphs into straight lines and how to propagate your uncertainties. If you have not watched part one, I would suggest you to do so. We're going to pick up where we left off. If you were trying to find a relationship between your variables, you would plot your independent variables on the horizontal axis and your dependent variable on the vertical. In my scenario, my object has fallen for a given time, and here are its means displacement. And this particular graph shows you that it's definitely not linear. Now, I've fitted a trend line to it um, because that's the way that you're supposed to have done graphs. Um, and you can see that it's not linear. And for, it, for me, this particular data fit is actually a power relationship. However, fitting data to a particular trend line um, doesn't actually tell us the relationship. So we're going to go back to the theoretical analysis to work out for ourselves what we should be plotting and how we can turn this curved line into a straight line. Just remember that this is all based on theory, so you will need to have a theoretical understanding of kinematics. Our theoretical understanding comes from this object moving vertically straight down due to gravity. So I'm going to use a kinematics formula to describe the displacement given that I know the time. So the formula should be S, and I'm going to use the equation editor. So S equals to U T plus a half A T squared. So that's a basic formula that appears also in your data and formulas booklet. But for this object, since it starts off at rest and it's dropped, um, the U value, this value is actually zero. So if this is actually zero, then I don't actually have a UT term since anything multiplied by zero is actually zero. And so I'm going to readjust my formula on the next line. So it really should look like this. Um, S equals to a half. And instead of A, I'm going to use uh, G for gravitational acceleration vertically straight down and T squared. Now, in this particular formula, I'm going to highlight all of the things that I know to be constants. The half is a constant and also the g is a constant. So I'm going to turn these into a slightly different color font. And you'll be able to see that I've now got my variables um, collected on two sides, except on the right hand side, instead of having t, I've actually got t squared. In fact, the formula tells us the proportionality relationship. So this would mean that s. Um, turns an equation again, S is proportional to uh, T squared. You can always turn an equation back into a proportionality just by removing the constant. So that's what I've just done. And this tells us what we should be plotting on the graph. We don't need to do anything to the mean displacement, but we do need to do something to the time. We will need to square it. Now that we've worked out that we want time squared, I've pre-prepared some columns of values in column I, J, and K. I'm going to, going to show you the column headings now so you can see them. Here I've got time squared, and you can see I've also got the name, symbol, and units in every column. I have also in column J and K taken care of the measurement uncertainties that came from time, and now that I'm dealing with time squared, the propagation of these uncertainties. Let's begin the calculation. Go to the first box in your particular column, type in equals to get the equation function in Excel. And then you want to choose the time column. So A4, this is my first set of value that links to this. I'm going to square it to square. Simply hold down the shift button and press six to get the little hat. And, that, and then two to get you the squared function. Press enter and that would calculate the square. We're going to autofill again. This is covered in the first video. Um, and now it autofills all of those values, which is fantastic. Now for the measurement uncertainty um, of the time squared, and particularly the percentage uncertainty. If you are unfamiliar with the term uh, propagation of uncertainties, please go back to the OneNote unit that we did um, in unit two, which goes through how to actually propagate uncertainties. In this particular scenario, I've got time, which is squared. And in terms of the calculation or the operation that it undergoes, it is multiplication. And in multiplication, the percentage uncertainties add. So I would need to add the percentage uncertainty of time normally 
for that particular value, but I will need to do that twice because I've got time squared. So I'm going to get Excel to do the calculation for me now. So I will need to, first of all, calculate the percentage uncertainty of the first value. The measurement uncertainty for time is fixed for this whole experiment. I've left that highlighted in that particular column A. It's 0.2 of a second because it is the human reaction time. So to calculate a percentage uncertainty, you simply use the measurement uncertainty that you've got, which is 0.2, divided by your actual time measurement, which for me is this particular cell. Now I could type in one, but I don't want to do that because I want Excel to do the calculations for me. So I want it to reference all the time to this box A4. I've clicked on it. So now it shows up in the equation as A4. And to wrap it up, I will need to multiply the whole thing by 100 to get my percentage measurement uncertainty. But this is only for one time measurement. Since I'm calculating time squared, I'm going to have to do this twice or actually double this. So I'm going to close this. You have two options. The strict, um, I guess, definition is that uh, percentage uncertainties add when we are multiplying or dividing quantities. And in this case, we're multiplying. And if we are adding or subtracting quantities, it would be the absolute uncertainties that would add. So you can add them, or in this case, uh, because the two values are identical, you can just multiply by two. But I'm going to go with um, the original definition. So I'm going to go, I like that. I'm going to put a little add symbol plus. I'm going to add the other um, slot of percentage measurement uncertainty. So now I've got both lots, and that makes it the percentage measurement uncertainty for time squared. Uh, press enter. And that tells me that, wow, I've got 40% measurement uncertainty for the first one, but that's okay. We'll double click and the calculations will change because the references of each cell uses the next time interval. And as you can see, uh, because our human uh, absolute measurement uncertainty was 0.2 of a second, it pays for us to have a longer time measurement because 0.2 of four, uh, Twice, it's only 10%, but if I use 0.2 of a second, I'm only trying to measure a second, it becomes a large percentage measurement uncertainty. So this gives you a hint as to uh, when you're using people, particular people on stopwatches to measure time, that perhaps a longer time uh, interval would be much better. So the measurement uncertainty for time squared, now to calculate this, uh, we use the percentage measurement uncertainty, and all we have to do is to say, wow, um, it's 40% uncertain, so we're looking at 40% in the scenario of the time squared value. So all I have to do is just really multiply these two together. So first of all, use the equation function in Excel. Uh, go to your uh, percentage uncertainty value. But remember, it is in a percentage. So you will need to divide by 100 before you use it. And then multiply it by 1 because I want really 40% of um that particular uh, time squared value. I'm not going to type in one once again because I want to use Excel. So I'm telling it all of the time squared value is in column I and I'm going to start at column I row four. Click enter. That tells you the measurement uncertainty of the time squared and I simply double click and I fill down. There are some things here that should be adjusted just like before. The significant figures must be adjusted so that each of these values are only at one significant figure. So here at 1.2, 1.4 and 1.6, I'm going to bump these down so that they only display as single uh, one significant figure values. The percentage errors are trickier because the percentage errors all exceed 10%. So I'm going to leave them at two significant figures showing you um, a much larger range of values. Um, this is fine uh, and absolutely fine, particularly if you exceed 10%. I'm going to stop here because the next thing to show you is how to plot the graph.